this is George at Hypno Comics, and I'm here with uh, Dave Dorman for part two. He was nice enough to stick around with us, and uh, you know, we're just kind of chewing the fat, as they say, and um, we ran out of time the last time. So, um, thanks for sticking around. My pleasure. And I know you got places to be. You're a busy guy, so uh, um, nothing more important than this. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Flattery, sir. We're good. I like it. <laughs> so let's um, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the state of the industry a little bit. Okay. Um, where do we start? I mean, um, let, let let's start with we were talking about some of the technology and how it's impacting creators and right. their work. Um, you know, digital medium, the Wacom tablets. Yeah, that's definitely a, a, a right now is you do have a generation of, of artists that have never touched traditional mediums. Right. Pencils, brushes, paints, everything's been done and uh, being taught in schools uh, digitally. Mm -hmm. And you know, that certainly is understandable consider considering the technology that's available. Sure. And the, the way that the product you know, goes through production and, and gets to the consumer you know, you're seeing um, much more interest in electronic books and electronic comics than you are with, you know, hard copies. Mm -hmm. That's all digital, obviously. So why not, you know, create the books digitally yeah. uh, and draw digitally, write digitally, and so on. Uh, so it's becoming less and less frequent that you find artists that are traditionally taught as far as medium goes, mm. as far as actual oil paints or watercolors or acrylics or you know, drawing with a pencil and then inking with a pen or a brush you know, on the board. Right. Um, you're finding more and more that, that the, the pencilers who have been working for years are giving, are still doing pencil artwork on the, on the Bristol board, but they're scanning it in. Scanning it in, right. They're sending it to the inker, and mm -hmm. then the inker is doing it on the Wacom tablet, right. you know, with, uh, you know, Manga Studio or something mm -hmm. uh, that gives them that same look as a, a pen and ink brush, but it's digital. And, you know, if they could, I'm sure, make a, a real good pencil, you know, from the Wacom tablet that, you know, can hold up in the computer. You know, the pencilers would be doing, you know, the drawing yeah. in the computer as well. <laughs> and then the inker just needs to kick the levels up a little bit. Yeah, exa <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so the technology definitely is um, uh, is changing the way things, uh, uh, the, the way the artist is approaching the material. Yeah. And it's a little bit disappointing because, uh, you know, traditional mediums, uh, are called traditional for a reason, mm -hmm. is they've been done for centuries and centuries and centuries. Right. And there's a tactile thing that comes along with dragging a, 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 an ink nib across a piece of paper or dipping you know, a brush into paint and putting it on a canvas and seeing how it flows and, and seeing the texture and the volume and the opacity and the transparency uh, that you can't get in a, a digital paint. Right. Digital paint, you see a pixel of color. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I think that tactile experience is starting from where you, the creators, begin, still who are doing it traditionally. That translates to me, I mean, as a hobbyist, not just as a retailer, but as a fan of the medium the tactile experience for me is I still read my paper comics. I own an iPad and I have digital comics, yeah. but I will always read paper comics as long as they are produced. Yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not against digital uh, delivery of the content because I think it gets it to a, a much more broader audience. Sure, it does. You yeah. know, which um, can maybe translate to maybe more sales, more yeah. money for creators. Yeah. You know? But, you know, with, with, you know, an iPad, you know, you could take wherever you want to go, put it in your bag or, you know, just uh, in your backpack or whatever, carry it around, sit in the park and read it. 
you know, but that battery is going to go dead eventually. I'm with you. And if you got two comics rolled up and, and you know stuck in your <laughs> pocket, you know you're not going to pull them out and see them blank because their batteries ran yeah, dead. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Know? Listen to this yeah, right you're here. Gonna, this you're going to have you're going to have a comic <laughs> that is going to be with you wherever you want to go. Yeah. And for me, that is what will always keep me reading comics is that I will have them and have them in front of me and I don't have to rely on anything else to be able to enjoy that medium. Yeah. So, you know, digital is good, technology is good, but it has its drawbacks as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I still paint traditionally. Uh, I scan my work in, I make a digital file, I add a little bit here and there, but I don't create from a blank screen to a fully finished image. Right. And maybe, you know, um, you know, I, I, there's a, a barrier somewhere that, that I don't want to do that because I would lose what has made me an artist, you know, for the past 30 years yeah. is, is, you know, squeezing out that paint and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, getting it on my hands and stinking up the studio, you know, yeah. with, with turpentine and, and, uh, uh, you know, sort of living you know that tactile experience of creating uh, uh -huh. rather than sitting at a cold um, computer I understand and, but you know for, for each artist is different and I, I do understand that you know the artists uh, that are, are coming up now uh, their tool is the computer yeah just like my tool is traditional mm -hmm. and I don't denigrate that because some tremendous amount of work uh, is being done in the computer world, art world. Oh yeah, uh, I, yeah I look absolutely. at some of the work and it just, just blows me away. Yeah, um, and it, it, it's cer there's certainly a lot that uh, the computer can allow that that I can't do traditionally, but there's certainly a lot that I can do traditionally that no computer will ever be able to emulate. Right, and so it, there's there's a balance there. Um, but, you know, it, it's unfortunate that one of the major drawbacks of that is that along with a generation of artists that are learning digital as a medium uh, to tell their stories, there's also that generation of art directors that are coming up that only know digital artwork as well. Yeah. And from personal experience, uh, I have lost jobs specifically because I don't paint digitally, which is, is odd because it should be the final image that the art director or editor is looking for, not how it got to be the final image. Right, right. So it shouldn't matter. But as I said, I have personal experience of art directors and editors you know, asking if I do digital work, and when I say no, then I lose the job. So it, now you mentioned that you do your, your art traditionally, um, and, but you do scan it in right. and work on it. So you could still right. deliver it digitally. I, I digitally. Do, everything I do is delivered digitally now. Right. Correct. Right. So yeah, I no longer send an original painting out of the studio. Yeah. What, what would be the holdup for something? Like that? I don't know. That's stupid. And, you know, for, for, <laughs> you know, as 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 a, a freelance commercial illustrator, um, it's not my spot to argue with understand. my art director editor yeah, understand. you know it really got me angry when this happens you know but i'm not going to blow them crap because of it that's the way they want to run their business then they're not going to get my art yeah. i mean it's as simple as that yeah. they contact me they want me to do a piece of art they ask me if i do a digital i say no i scan it in and give you a digital file they and then they say, no, well, we want you to paint it digitally. And I say, no, and then lose the job. It's, it's them that's losing out, really. Um, but you know, it makes me you know, think that you know, somewhere in the industry, there's a short circuit in, in that um, the value of the finished art is not appreciated because of the medium that it's done in right by by certain by certain people who don't have any experience of that medium yeah so it's very frustrating for me to see that more and more uh within the industry 
And you know, something that I think about, and again, I'm not against digital delivery of the content. You know, I mean, as like there's some retailers who are like, oh my God, digital is going to end my business. No, I, I, I disagree with that. So, but that's a whole nother ball. ball I, think, I think it's, it's a <laughs> long way away before actual hard copy books are going to disappear. I think, I think there's a grand tradition of comics being printed. Sure. And kids love them. They still love comics being printed. I don't Me, think it'll ever go away. Yeah. I think it might fall into the, oh my God, there's a record store. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might fall into that niche, I right? Mean, you know, later decades, po from now. Po possibly, possibly, yeah. Um, but I, I, I think that you know, hard copies will still will still exist. I agree. And, and, and on the on the topic of hard copies, is seeing more and more of the younger artists and uh, moving to the digital format. It's like, how long is it going to take to where there is no more original art available? Mm -hmm. Well, you're seeing that uh, a little bit more. There are some artists that uh, I knew, uh, peers that, that of mine from, you know, 15 years ago that created uh, uh, traditional art uh -huh. that you could hold and look at and hang on the wall that no longer do that. They just do uh, uh, computer art that is, you know, in the files digitally. They make a print. Or they send the file to the publisher, and that's it. Yeah. And uh, uh, I've had discussions with uh, some of these artists, and, and they sort of regret the fact that uh, there is no original to right. hang on the wall. <laughs> but that's a, a, a commercial choice. I mean, they are making a choice um, in their medium. Uh, perhaps maybe they move faster. Uh, being able to produce digital work, okay. and as a, a freelance artist, the faster you can turn over work, the more work you can produce, and the more money you can make. Got it. So they can view not having an original to sell to a collector or at a shop uh, at a show, um, uh, balancing it, it against you know how much money they're they're making from their their clients the, and the quantity uh, of the work the that they're doing. The work that okay. they're doing. Got it. So um, for me. Um, you know, I, I enjoy creating physical pieces of art that you can hang on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I know that my fans, my, my customers who buy my artwork, love that as well. Well, sure, yeah. Uh, so for me, I, I can't think of a time where I would actually go into fully rendering something from, from a blank screen to a digital image. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that just, I, I would feel something is missing in that. Yeah. Uh, now, if I was doing ROFs or, or some game design or something where uh, it's, it's worked product that they want and not a finished image, that's a little bit different. But if I was going to uh, create, you know, a cover for like Aliens or something, yeah. um, I wouldn't do it in the computer because I would know, just for me, that... It doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah, that's, that's the thing is, like, well, one, paint um, in this medium is rare to begin with. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, you know, there's like yourself, what, John Jamuth, mm -hmm. Bill Sinkovich does it. You, right. know, you don't uh, see Chris it. Chris Muller and uh, yeah. Scott Hampton. I mean, yeah, yeah, there, there's, Williams, there's, yeah there's a handful of, of guys that still do it traditionally. And I get it. It's... it's takes a lot longer. I yeah. get it, you know? So it's always going to be about the bottom line. But well, I you know, it, it doesn't necessarily take a lot longer. I can turn over in, uh, <laughs> in, you know, in a, a deadline situation. Yeah. Uh, I could turn over a cover in two days. Okay. Uh, if need be. That's you know, if, I, if I work long hours. That's and awesome. uh, Yeah. So, you know, I can work as fast as any digital artist. Uh, it's just I'm not working in that medium. Right. Right. Uh, and there is sort of uh, a prejudice uh, against that in certain areas. Gotcha. So, so let's circle back to the yeah. The maybe some of the peers that are are doing it digitally now. They used to do it traditionally because they're able to pump out more quantity of work. Are they truly making more money than they used to? Well, one of the things that that has happened is because it's digital. Uh, there's a little bit bigger market. So guys who are doing painting, like uh, uh, take John Van Fleet, mm -hmm. uh, who used to do traditional painting for, for his books, his graphic novels, his storytelling. Uh, he moved into digital. Mm -hmm. 
and started playing with that and really enjoyed it quite a bit. So 99% uh, of the work that he's doing is digital, but by opening the door digitally, he has moved also into gaming uh, design, moved outside the comics industry, right. uh, doing some gaming design work, doing some um, uh, three-dimensional uh, creation uh, for uh, websites and, and uh, other things. Okay. So, so it's it's not um, in in today's situation, uh, being a digital artist um, can open doors for you in other avenues. So it'd be harder for me to break into um, digital gaming because I, I do traditional work. Right. Even though it's the same work in the end, right. you know, you get character designs, you get landscapes, you get, you know, uh, pre-production images. Um, you know, it's easier for John to get the work because he already works in digital. Mm -hmm. oh, gotcha. We'll take the digital artist over the traditional artist. So the doors that you said that, that are opening, that's kind of a a good segue into like maybe some of the new up and coming creators that want to get into the comic book medium um, as a living. Are they going to need to be able to open up all those doors in order to survive? Are they going to be able to do it just in the world of comic books nowadays? Well, I, I when I do my lectures and, and uh, I talk to students and, and talk to art uh, art students and creative people who are coming up in the field, when I'm doing portfolio um, reviews mm -hmm. at shows and, and seeing what's being done, I try to strive to, to, to make the point to the artist that comics or science fiction artwork isn't the be-all and end-all of art. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a genre to work in, but to really be successful, not just today, uh, you know, in years past mm -hmm. and in the future, uh, it's best to be diversified. Sure. So that you can do many different types of subjects, many different types of genres. And the easiest way to do that is learn the basics. Learn how to draw, learn how to paint. It doesn't matter what medium, if you're using digital or traditional. It all starts with the structure, it starts with light and shadow, it starts with composition, all of the very basic, simple things that make an illustration, a piece of art, what it is. Um, unfortunately, the computer, with the varied programs that you can get that basically build things for you. Yeah, like Manga Studio. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, uh, th uh, 3D mm -hmm. uh, programs, DAZ and, and Poser. DAZ, yeah, DAZ 3D, and, yeah. Um, um, some of the landscape, like Bryce. Um, Even Google SketchUp. Even Google SketchUp, yeah. uh, they sort of give w the artist a handicap. That might not be the, the right word, but they're using those tools to create rather than understanding what makes a good piece of art right. and understanding what shapes create a human form or an animal form or uh, 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 a house or, or a car. Uh, they just import the car or import the house. They don't understand how it's created. Right. And so one of the drawbacks to that is we are getting, you know, I, I go back to the generation thing, but we are getting a generation of technicians rather than artists. artists. Ooh, that's good. Because they're, they're put they're putting elements together mm -hmm. rather than creating, creating. the elements. Yeah. And by putting elements together, you don't understand how it's built. And then you, you start losing the perspective on lights and darks and composition, tonal things. Right. And it's just, you know, a pretty element here, a pretty element here, and uh, some color over here. Well, yeah, and even with some of the 3D programs, you can move the light source around right. so they're not really getting that they're just moving it right so and so it's yeah from. so it's 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 artists who aren't really creating art they're they're technically building an image but they're not understanding how the eye flows what color theory is and how mm -hmm. that works um, with the elements that are within the piece um, 
uh, perspective. Um, you know, things that are all basics that should be <coughs> taught and learned by the students so that when they start putting these things into their work, they understand what they're creating. Right. Not just saying, here's a guy standing over here, you know, here's a superhero coming down to beat him up, and then there's a building in the back. All right, drop shadow. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. So, so it's frustrating to see uh, a lot of the, the um, kids um, and I, I, I say kids, I, I mean just artists who are trying to m make their breaks in the industry, bring up portfolios, uh, especially in the digital portfolios, that are obvious that they don't know the basics. They're just creating images. And that's really heartbreaking because y you know they've put a lot of work into figuring out how to work the programs, right? You know, but nobody's really help them or they've never asked the fundamentals of yeah, yeah. Ex exactly so, um, so that that's a problem another problem is is manga and I know manga is very popular uh, and I love you know manga stuff myself yeah but there's also a lot of uh, kids especially uh, young girls uh, who want to be artists and they love manga and they're studying manga to learn how to draw Right. And that's all that they know when they have their portfolio and it's all manga stuff. That's all well and good, but the world of art is not manga. Manga is this little cubicle over here, and the world of art is like right, over here. Right. Well, I'm just saying like your sci-fi genre. And right. Yeah. And okay. so, you know, once again, I, I, I try to make a point that manga is just an extrapolation of basic forms. And so if you learn those basic forms, you can exaggerate those into whatever direction you want to go. Mm. You know, Bigfoot humor stuff or, you know, crazy uh, uh, independent, you know, characters or manga style artwork. But it's all still very simple, basic, you know, uh, uh, underlying uh, things that need to be understood right. before you can start moving into uh, translating them into uh, some other style. So learning manga is not really learning how to draw. It's learning how to copy manga, manga artwork. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, very, it's, it's sometimes frustrating uh, talking to people, looking at their portfolio, looking at their art, saying, you know, you, you're doing fine copying somebody manga. else's <laughs> artwork. Yeah, or, you know, <laughs> copying Jim Lee or... or uh, right. Uh, Simon Bisley or, or me, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, but that's how they learn. And somebody should have said earlier on, you know, go back to the basics. Yeah. And I was fortunate when I started to, to draw comics, um, I figured out that it's all sort of based upon uh, elements, you know, the, the, the rib cage is round and, and arms are sort of cylindrical. Mm -hmm. and, and so when I just sort of, sort of sketch it, you know, I, that's the way I would draw it. It just sort of came natural to me. Yeah. Uh, and then when I started, you know, being taught and, and reading books about how to do it, well, that just reinforced that I was learning the proper way. Mm -hmm. And so I was fortunate in, in uh, um, being self-taught uh, is very perceptive in, in seeing uh, things beyond just from what they were uh, and going out and researching things. Uh, so I, I um, you know, I didn't have a teacher during those days, but, you know, I made an effort to try to find ways to educate myself. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, nowadays the internet makes it so easy uh, to, you know, just type in how to draw yeah and you get a hundred websites that will show you how to create forms yeah not, YouTube not, videos, in, the cu not yeah. in the computer <laughs> sitting down with a pencil and blank piece of paper and drawing a circle for the head and you know cutting it in half so it's it's uh, uh, two-sided so the you know the right side eye and the left side eye are in pretty much the same space on both sides right, right. And, <laughs> and, and you know that type of thing and it's all there you know just to be had and I, you know, I 
really, you know, make a point to a lot of the, the artists that, that I talk with, you know, who are up and coming, you know, learn the basics. Yeah. But learn them so you can adapt them to any other type of, of genre because the world of comics and the world of science fiction, fantasy art, it may seem big, but there's a much bigger world out there for art. I mean, for design, uh, for architecture, yeah. um, for you know, costuming, uh, you know, it, e everything that is here, everything that you see starts with a drawing in one form or another. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a, a computer drawing or a hand drawn. You know, someone, you know, created that fan. Someone created the, the blades on the fan. Right, right. They just didn't take a big piece of wood, you know, and start whittling <laughs> it down with a knife. You know, someone took a pencil and said, okay, we want a fan blade that looks like this. Yeah. That's art. And so the world is, is very big uh, for someone who knows what they're doing. And if you know the basics and you can draw a human, you can draw a, su a superhuman, or you can draw a guy sitting at a desk, you know, typing on a computer, mm -hmm. or a guy changing his tire. Right. Um, but if all you know is how to draw big, bulky superhero guys, you know, or girls with big chests, um, you know, you're limiting yourself to where you can market that talent. Right. If, you, if all you know is manga, well, yeah, you can go over to Japan and maybe make a living, but, you know, you can't make a living here because... You know, manga, well, most of the manga is being imported from J Japan yeah. anyway. Well, yeah, literally uh, thousands yeah. of books a month. But yeah. uh, uh, you don't see mainstream illustration uh, in America in the manga style. Yeah. So <clears throat> it, it's, uh, um, it's something that's not taught in schools. Uh, schools tend to teach and, and reinforce sort of what you want to learn or what the teacher wants to teach you. Right. Rather than... Um, the, the bigger scope, the bigger world out there. This is what you need to learn to make it in the big world outside. Yeah. And, and I, I feel very comfortable in sharing what I've learned over my 30 years of experience mm -hmm. um, to the, the people that I do lectures for at schools, at the conventions when uh, students come up with uh, uh, portfolios. Uh, it, it, it really needs to be said because it's not being uh, taught to them. Uh, what the real world is like. You know, they've lived in their world, you know, painting science fiction characters, drawing manga. Yeah. Uh, that's their world. And school just doesn't really say there's a bigger world out there. They say, you can draw like this, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, I don't know, I think a lot of the up-and-coming creators, the, their dream is always to work for, like, the big two. Right. And, you know... There's nothing wrong with that if you're that good. Yeah. But if you're not that good, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, you're either going to know enough about art to be able to start looking outside the industry, mm -hmm. or you're going to go to McDonald's and say, you know, I can flip burgers. <laughs> you need a bachelor's degree at McDonald's. Then. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Then, then stay in <laughs> school. <laughs> Get your bachelor's in art. Yeah. Then, then, then yeah. Do it. So, uh, you know, it's it's uh, the world of art is a wonderful place to live. Yeah. And I feel I have the greatest job in the world in just getting up in the morning, sitting down at my drawing table and creating, creating something from nothing. Yeah. And I just encourage artists who have that passion to continue along those lines. Don't get discouraged. Learn all you can about art, but don't pigeonhole yourself into a very specific style or a very specific genre. I wanted to draw comics when I was younger, but I learned through just drawing and painting that the world is much bigger than that. So right now, I can draw comics, mm -hmm. I can paint magic cards, I can do Star Wars covers, I can do toy designs, I can do movie production work, I can paint for myself. Yeah. I can do non-genre stuff, big canvas pieces that hang in my house and nobody else sees, <laughs> but I'm happy with it, yeah. and that's my creative outlet and my life. Okay, I'm getting the, the wrap-up here. We're so getting the wrap-up? We're getting okay. the wrap-up. Um, what 
If there was one book that you could do a cover for right now, what would it be? Um, my own graphic novel, Rail. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's something that we're going to look on uh, this year is to uh, reestablish rail. Okay. Uh, the graphic novel that came out in uh, 2001 um, sort of died a, a very quiet death, and uh, I want to resurrect that because a lot of fans are still interested in new that story. New print coming up soon? Uh, a new Maybe. printing of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking into a new printing that okay. uh, might be able to fund the, the continuing. It's a, fi it's a five graphic novel series. So the first one's done. Uh, we'll see about reprinting it. Um, there'll be an announcement probably during San Diego about okay. what we're going to do with it. Um, I'm uh, uh, working on some Captain Nemo uh, artwork that uh, will premiere in San Diego. This, uh, yeah, here's yeah, yeah. Uh, show that. This is this. Come on, look at that Nemo. Get a push in on this right here. That's gorgeous. Yeah, so I've, I've, that's part of a triptych. They're very large canvas pieces. So, yeah. Um, uh, we're going to do uh, those as prints. Uh, I've got, um, oh, what else? Oh, just a, got any hitch coming uh, up. Yeah, I got hits coming yeah. up. Monster All Massacre. Right. Gonna have a new sketchbook for San Diego. Yes. Uh, keep an eye on on the blog and and the Facebook page for announcements of new projects. Uh, I've got a million things running through my head. I, I told my wife Denise uh, last year was the year of Dave. And then I got sick at the end of the year, so <laughs> I've added a few more months to, uh, to this year. Right. So this year's going to be the year of Dave, too. Right. And uh, I've got some really fun things coming out. So please just keep an eye on, on the internet for what's Make happening. sure you go by his uh, blog. It's davedorman.wordpress.com. Um, so that'll give you up to speed on everything. And Dave, I just wanted to say thank you. It was a pleasure um, hanging out with you. Uh, thanks for having me I, here. I, I really, great. I really uh, appreciate you coming out here while you're out here in California. I hope you have a great visit. We are so far. All right. There you go, Slicers, Dave Dorman. Go to his webpage.